Hey, fancy seeing you again. <laughs> Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm good. Am I the only one here? <laughs> so far. Oh my God. I'm sure that'll change. Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey. How you doing? Good. How are you? Hanging in so far. <laughs> Sounds good. <clears throat> Will I? Hopefully, we'll be seeing you Saturday. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good. You have to see our beautiful wares. Yeah. We have quite the collection. <laughs> I'll be adding to it as well. I haven't brought my own stuff. No, we closed donations at May 31st. <laughs> <laughs> no more. Do you have things to hang everything up? Do you we have some stuff? We also have a tent and there are some clothes hangers. So we are going to also hang from the tent. You can see the scarves and um, yeah, we just have tons of stuff all kinds of stuff. I had lunch today with a, a senior and she told me she went into her closet and cleaned out all kinds of stuff and <laughs> brought it down. So. Oh, oh, joy. Good. Yeah. <laughs> it's always interesting the things people have, you know, sometimes it's really helpful and sometimes you're like, hmm, okay. I can <laughs> see why you don't want this in your house anymore. Yeah. So we could all do some early holiday shopping Saturday. Yes, you could. Yeah, we awesome. actually have some really beautiful, like, I don't know if they're all silk. They might some be satin, um, but scarves. We have some a really nice collection of. Um, there's obviously a, a ton of costume jewelry, but there are some other really nice pieces, um, especially bracelets, if that's what you're looking for. Um, and then a pretty varied selection of handbags and ties and wall. Actually, some really nice wallets like all leather wallets. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay, so you do have ties. Do you need mm -hmm. more ties? They're, I don't think they're going to be a big seller. I don't think a lot of people are wearing them as much anymore, but we saved ones that were like really funky. So if you have some eclectic ties, we could use those. That'd be good. I think we have some that are like a uh, dual purpose tie and bib because they're so darn oh. wide. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I saw a few of those. <laughs> Maybe we could take those back to the center. Original Ralph Lorenz, I think. <laughs> uh... <laughs> that wide. So Karen, are you enjoying having the students all gone from campus? You know, it doesn't really matter in my day-to-day -day life at work, but it's it's weird, actually. It's so quiet now. I mean, it just, I mean, I know it's always like this in the summer. I just forget from year to year what it's like, um, mm -hmm. but it's quiet right now. But yeah, so I, I guess I do enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy when they come back. You know, there's a certain mm -hmm. energy there when yep. they're on campus, but it's nice to be able to like walk through campus and not have to kind of fight your way. <laughs> Haley, have, did you hear from anyone who said that they wouldn't be able to attend tonight? Mm -mm. Okay.
Christine, are you there? Oh, I am absolutely here. Hello. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, because I think you gave us quorum, right? We got. We have a quorum. Hi, Ann. Wow, it says it cannot start video. Please select another video camera and settings. I'm going to try logging off and logging in again. Okay. 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 And then otherwise, I think we're just missing two, right? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Success, Christina. Oh, nice. We have two Dennis's. What? <coughs> um, oh, yeah, your name is appearing twice. Really? Yeah. Do you see? We have two you... Dennis's on the screen. Yeah. I can, I can only see one. Yeah. Do, um, see. do gallery view. Do you see it now if you change it to gallery? I just changed it to, oh yeah, I'm, I'm uh, black at the bottom. I hmm. wonder. Hmm. A phantom. Yeah. No, I can't, Weird. I can't yeah. do anything to get rid of it. No. Okay. Why it's there. You don't have it up in like another device. We maybe. got two of you today. I, I, don't, I don't think so, but let me make okay. really sure. Does it matter? No, it's more just like a quirky little thing. I've never seen that happen before. Let me. Uh... Mm. No. OK. It's seven no. after, so I'm going to get us started because I think we have okay. a pretty full agenda. OK, I'm going to call the meeting of the Council on Aging June 5th to order. Um, we'll start off with our roll call. Anne. Here. Terry. Are folks muted? I'm not hearing anything. Are people saying anything? Here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Chad, I think I can see him. All right. Here. Chad? No. He's not. No. Here. Yeah. Okay. I didn't think so. Dennis. Right here. Christina. I'm here. And Karen. Here. And Jacqueline. I don't see her. Okay. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law, chapter 30A, section 18, this meeting of the Council on Aging is being conducted via remote participation. This meeting is also being recorded. I wanna welcome everybody to the meeting. And um, first off, thank the vice chair for uh, running last month's meeting. So glad that was a, that went well. Um, 
wanted to say this is a special meeting in that to the best of my knowledge we are losing two members Karen and Ann will be departing and so just wanted to um, before we delved into everything wanted to take a moment to say thank you both so much for your time attention and dedication to um to helping us and um we we really appreciate all your your efforts on behalf of the, the seniors in town. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you to all of you. Okay. Um, thank you, Anne, and thank you, Karen. Thank you, girls. Very fortunate to have you. All right. We're going to move on to old business, and that's... Uh, the selection of a new secretary. We, we know that Terry is eager to um, pass the pen or the keyboard on to somebody. Um, and we're hoping all of you gave it ample thought the past okay. month and you're just chomping at the bit to throw your hand up to say, yes, I'll do it. So who would like to be the new secretary? Cricket. <laughs> you all hit the mute button on me. Didn't you? <laughs> all right. My suggestion if we can oh, everybody raise your hand at once. Yes. I know. <laughs> Since we're that's fighting, not happening. We're all fighting for the job. Yeah. I think probably the fairest thing to do would be to take turns with this so it isn't an undue burden on any one person unless somebody has a change of heart and wants to take it on on a regular basis. Anyone have any other suggestions or ideas as to how best to handle this? We can beg our new members to please, please be the secretary because <laughs> we'll get a, we'll have um, a full board in June, in July, excuse me. And when are they coming? July. They were approved at the last town council July. meeting. Okay. I'll wait till um, July. Okay. Uh, were, okay. <laughs> were, any members, were any members of the present council there to interview them? Usually that falls to the council chair who was not able to be at those meetings. Um, but it is the discretion of the town manager to ultimately choose and um, appoint individuals to any body I, in town. I did not see it in the minutes, but I made a very strong suggestion that there be, a, in addition to the chairperson, at least one other member of the council there at the interview process and the decision-making process. And mm -hmm. I want it recorded in the minutes that I'm very disturbed that no member of this committee was present. Mm. I think that's not probably- way, It is not the way to fill. I'm, I'm gonna finish saying this because I mm -hmm. want it in the minutes so badly. This so far in my experience, my limited experience with the committee, has not been a, an active working committee. And if you are going to have active new members, it's very important that somebody be there. So if the chairman couldn't be there, I think someone else should have been asked. Well, I, I can step in and kind of fill that question. And so ultimately the Council on Aging is supposed to support the director of the senior center and the senior center itself. And so I was there asking questions like, are you able to make a volunteering commitment to the senior center when you become a council on aging member? It's really important to me that we have people who are directly connected with the senior center. Um, you know, I think Jean and I both had discussed what we were looking for in an ideal candidate. Um, and like I said, ultimately it falls to the town itself to select and appoint members. Um, so I can definitely understand, you know, where you're coming from with that. But ultimately, it does need to be a call between myself and the town manager of, you know, who do I want helping to advise and support me? And Anne, I will just apologize. I had every intent in joining and circumstances were such that I, I was, Jean, I couldn't make I'm it. Only, I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I'm 
this is this is not directed at you. It's just generally directed that someone else should have been called. If not, if Dennis then couldn't make it, some other member of the council should have been there to represent the council. Well, and my I circumstances am, I am, were very last minute, so it, it didn't okay. allow for anybody else to. I, 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 I agree. Of, I agree with you, Anne. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I had three members of the council in my interview, along with the town manager. And I don't know if Haley was there, but definitely the town no. manager was there. And, um, and I had two uh, meetings. There was one sort of like an orientation. So yeah, there should be, we sh there should be someone who can represent the council. I didn't know about it or either I didn't read my email. I have no clue. A lot of yeah. times I don't have a clue. Yeah, and that was probably because at that time, I don't know that you had a director of the senior center. It might've been when Mary Beth had left. And at that point, there were three members of like a leadership triad. So that's probably why you saw all three of them. So may I ask a question at this point? Mm -hmm. uh, and this really is a question of the, the structure of not only this committee, but other committees. Are all committees basically made up of people that have been appointed by the town manager and the um, town employee representative to the committee? I can't speak for other town employees because I, but my guess is that if it's an advisory committee, which the COA is, then yeah, likely there would be some input from the, the employee standpoint. But Paul is the ultimate person who puts forth names for consideration. And I did misspeak a little bit. So it's the town council who ultimately appoints that individual. But Paul is the one who makes the recommendation. That's how the town government is set up. There's an application online mm -hmm. and yes. then individuals okay. apply and then it goes first to the town manager's office. And then after that, it gets recommended to I see. whatever committee they want to join. I see. So, mm -hmm. so in essence, the committees are made up of people that the town manager feels will fulfill his agenda. I don't know if you could say that, but it's definitely his that. role, I know, but I'm just saying that it's within his jurisdiction to ultimately be the one who recommends those names. That is a part of his job. But Thank the you. website is accessible to everyone, Anne. Nobody twisted my arm. I didn't even know the town manager other than seeing him at the corner over here at the farmer's market. He does support community events. Mm -hmm. He shows up. So I saw him yeah. several times. However, he didn't twist my arm or ask me join so I could uh, do his bidding for him. I basically uh, was asked by a member on this committee, Jacqueline, as an African-American woman to join this council. And I thought about it and thought about it. And then I went online and filled out the application. And then months later, I was contacted. So it isn't like, I think the perception, there is a perception, but that's not the reality. Yeah, and there is a residents advisory committee who is also part of every town committee interview. So it's not like it's just myself and Paul, there's a neutral third party there who also makes recommendations. Okay. okay. I'm gonna move us off of this because I- has Chad has his hand up. Sorry, Chad, I didn't. Oh, okay, thank oh, you. There yeah, is. there is a double screening by the town manager. He selects the person to be interviewed. Then uh, after it goes through the interview process, he recommends it to the town council. So he's kind of like a double screen in there. Okay. All right. We're gonna move on to new business. And um, Haley, if you could throw 
Yes. Very much I mean, like sure among the many screen. things that we've talked about recently is kind of the focus and where we're headed. And so one of the tools that I think will go a long way in helping us with our direction is having an annual calendar. And so I took the liberty of starting a draft of one that I wanted to um, share and get your input and ideas about what else um, should be added to this. So the initial things included on here are the major events at the Senior Center in April, the big open house, which I think has been a huge hit. Um, and I think that's happened two years, Haley, right? Since you yes. yeah. started. Um, and then in June, the Community Safety Day, which obviously is coming up in a, a couple of weeks, that was mm -hmm. um, held, I think, for the first time last year, right? Yes. Yeah, that was, um, yeah, I'm proud to say that was the first time we have done it in the town. Yeah, yeah. And so it'll be bigger and better this year. Yes. And then moving um, into the fall, September, the Amherst, the, um, I think it's the chamber or bid does the, mm -hmm. the block party in downtown. And um, the, um, we had a table there, right? Mm -hmm. At yeah. That. And then in October, a couple of other events that we participate in the, um, the volunteer fair and the fire department open house. Mm -hmm. um, I do expect folks will have other ideas of events or new things will be added. But among the things that I just listed seasonally, because they aren't tied to a specific date per se, but I think it's important for us to have on our calendar is um, AARP offers a grant um, and made mention of it. I discovered it very late um, this past winter, like a week or two prior to the deadline. Um, so I want to get that on our calendar because I think it would behoove us to identify a project and then complete the grant application, see if we couldn't secure money to make some improvement. Um, that application is due in the early winter. So I thought to me, it makes sense that we start talking about it in the fall to identify what we might want to um, put forth as our project. Um, likewise, on our annual calendar, we should have member recruitment. Um, and I just listed that in the spring since we- Christina has her hand up, Jean. Through that. Oh, I, I need for that to be made bigger. Oh, okay. Um, yes, I, I would agree. I'm struggling myself trying to read it. Uh, not, uh, the, not the front, but just uh, in Word, down at the bottom, right, mm -hmm. there is a scale. This? And if you move it, it will make things oh, larger. Oh, I see. Tell me when. Yeah. Is this good? Yes, that's <laughs> okay. good. Oh, awesome. I didn't know about that. Okay. Um, so member recruitment should be something I think we should have on our, our calendar every spring. Um, something else that I would like to propose that we put on an annual calendar, and that's a program review that at some point, I don't know when the, the right time is, um, but that we kind of sit back and take a look at all the various programs offered throughout the year at the senior center and, um, kind of do some analysis about, you know, not only how they went, but who they served because I think it, um, we should be taking a look at um, if we're meeting every, all our, our um, different populations, are we meeting their needs in terms of what we offer? That you know we have not only the you know the exercise, the arts, the cultural, and so forth and so on. So um, to do a, a review. Um, and then a couple of other things that um, I think would, would be helpful for us is to, um, we recently, um, Dennis Haley and I and a, a new member attended um, the M MCOA, Massachusetts Council on mm -hmm. Aging um, Conference. Was, training. Yeah, training, training on how to be a COA board. Yeah. 
And so um, that was really useful and valuable for, for me. Um, and the idea came up that it would be helpful. We obviously share a lot of things in common, even though, you know, we're from Amherst and they're from Hadley or Ludlow, right? We're all kind of trying to do the same sorts of things. So um, that it would be helpful for us to get together with them to, you know, not only share ideas, but frustrations and maybe strategize. Maybe there's some things that we can um, work together on. So that to do that on a regular basis, what that means, I'm not sure whether that would be once a semester or what, but that was one idea. And then another is to um, visit other senior centers around um, because I think there's a lot we can um, we can learn by going into other senior centers, particularly those that um, are are new or recently renovated in terms of kind of where we would like to go in the future with our our senior center. So um, thoughts on the idea of a calendar for for COA? People like that idea. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense to me that we would have something, uh, this group of activities that would need to be done on a pretty regular basis. Since it is our responsibility to advise the, uh, the, the, the head of the senior center, then some look or analysis at, uh, at uh, the programs that are held there is, is probably a nice idea. So especially for program review, so yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, Karen? Yeah, I, I think uh, when it comes to grant writing, the one thing I would advise you is it takes, for those of you who haven't written a grant proposal, it takes way, way longer than you think it's going to take. <laughs> so if the deadline is winter, I would start as soon as the guidelines come out to start, mm -hmm. it just mm -hmm. takes, you know, grant oh, writing okay. kind of, it can really just, you really need a long a long period of time. You need to be able to go back to it, mm -hmm. especially if there's more than one person involved. Such as, but I think the calendar is a great idea. I wonder where it's going to live. Is it going to live as a working document or? Um, mm -hmm. Good yeah. question. That is a good question. So something else, um, I'm just going to make mention of it now. I don't know if it this is the right time or not, but I was reading old minutes of COA and pre-COVID, something they did, which I would like to suggest that we might want to um, try to do is for the, the minutes, they also listed out other documents that were um, handed out or discussed. Um, and I, I think that would, I would find that useful because I go back, I keep all my agendas, to go back to see, oh, it was in May when we first started talking about the calendar or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So um, I wanted to throw that out as an I idea. Mm -hmm. Would others find that helpful as well to, to list documents that are distributed and discussed at a particular yes. meeting? Yes. Okay. okay, all right. In terms of where the calendar should live, that's a fine and dandy question. I don't know, is there a, where where could it live? I guess. Oh, well, we I would, have a. I would oh, suggest sorry. Google Docs. I'm sorry. Mm, that's okay. I, I like would suggest Google Docs. Google Docs. If everyone here has a Gmail, I'm not assuming that you do, but Google Docs uh, is probably the most accessible for mm. sharing documents. And is that? I don't know what the town. If there are town rules on this? Uh, that I don't know, because we all have Microsoft. But I was going to say, maybe that's something yeah. that we could just pull up briefly at before each or at each meeting and kind of look at, OK, if it's June and we know that the volunteer fair is coming up in October, then we should probably start orchestrating that in like August or so, you know, or like yeah. like Karen said, it takes a long time to write grants. You want to edit, re-edit ad nauseum. Um, so it might be helpful to just maybe at each meeting talk about where we are now and what's coming up three, six, 12 months from now. Okay. But otherwise, I really like Google Docs 
but I don't know how the town feels about it. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't. I've never used Google Docs, but I'm sure I can learn. Right. Well, yeah. the thing okay. is, if I yes. may say so, if I may say so, um, Google Docs would probably not be as secure as the internal um, Microsoft OneDrive, but not everyone has Microsoft because right. it is very expensive. The, the, the city can have it for, for their employees, but in general, it's not cost efficient for an individual to use, but Google Docs is free. Mm -hmm. And um, so it has to reside on someone's um, account. And that would be yours, Jean, if you have a Gmail. I, I, I'd be happy to work with you on how to use it. It's not as uh, difficult as it may sound. It's very similar to uploading a document to an mm -hmm. email and downloading a document. It's on your, it's not on a computer that's gonna be used by the public. It's on your private computer and that keeps it secure because only you can log into your account. Okay. That's a good idea. Plus I can get, I've worked with other people who have Google Docs and you can share a link with me so that I can access it even though I am using Microsoft. So maybe if you, like Christina saying, if you had that, you could be the keeper of the calendar. Okay. Okay, I probably will need some tutor tutorial, but I'll give it the old college try. So, all right, Google Docs on my list. Okay, so we will, as a matter of course, bring up the calendar at our meetings. And I feel like this annual calendar is also gonna help us plan ahead for agendas um, in terms of what we topics we need to be discussing. So. Okay, anything else on the calendar? Okay, thank you, Haley, for mm -hmm. popping that up on the screen. Um, gonna turn things over to you for the director's update. Yeah, so hopefully you all got the um, spreadsheet that I sent around, but I may as well share my screen again in case people didn't get it. Um, so I've added, service days, because I feel like that gives a nice um, perspective for the average daily count. You know, if it's February, we're not going to have 22 days of service. It's going to probably be something like 19 or 18 with all the holidays and Can you um, make snow this days. bigger, Haley? Bigger, yes. I'm trying to think of how I want to do it. This, there's a slide at the bottom right. I used hotkeys. Or you can if, go to view, you can go to view. True, or you can do it. control plus and it'll um, get bigger too. But those are all fine answers. Um, but yeah, so I added the day so that we can get a little bit more perspective. I thought I was, you know, we dipped in May, but there were certain uh, days like UMass graduation where no one was really coming to the senior center because they couldn't get downtown to park anywhere. Um, and in the summertime, if it's hot, that turns people off sometimes. So it's not atypical to see a dip in service when we hit the, the high heat months. Um, but all in all, you know, almost 600 people is still a, a really good number. It's still kind of, it's not too far down that we should be worried that, that people aren't coming to the senior center. Um, volunteer hours, you know, again, if you look at the difference between February and March, we're tracking more consistently. And that was certainly the case in May where we logged over 400 hours of volunteer service. Um, so the past three months have steadily been, we're holding at our volunteer numbers. People are checking in when they're supposed to, um, which is really nice to see. Because the service numbers were down, you know, all the programs slightly down, um, you know, but we're still, lots of exercise, incredibly popular, the social events, we're adding more and more of those, you know, we are building an annual calendar. I think before I came on board, you know, obviously we had the pandemic, so I don't know what it looked like before COVID, but we weren't doing any annual events that I knew about. So, you know, now we have 
two or three um, that we can consider mainstays in our repertoire. The clinics that we do, those are in reference to the foot care clinics. Um, so we have a registered nurse who provides foot care service on a day and a half. That's the third Thursday of the month and the third Friday for half a day. And then we also have a licensed manicurist who come in and address, um, you know, people who just have general concerns. You know, if someone has diabetes, say the registered nurse is a better option for them. But if you just need your toenails clipped and, you know, polished up, it's a lot less expensive to use our uh, manicurist service. And meals were a little behind on logging, but I would certainly expect them to be pretty consistent over the last two months. I don't, there hasn't been a dip in service. And the new thing that you'll see is that now we are tracking our rides because our silver shuttle is active. Um, we have a fantastic driver and a fantastic um, scheduler for the rides. So I think it's really interesting when you look at what we did in May because we served only eight people, but those eight people used the van 24 times. So we're getting a lot of repeat customers, which I think, and this should be no surprise to anyone who's on this meeting, if you're not driving anymore, you need the van to go everywhere. So of course, we're going to see more service from what is a, a smaller concentration of people because they don't have other means. It's also less um, costly than the PVTA. You know, granted, we're not doing five days a week service, but it is clearly um, meeting a need for people in the community. One thing, um, you know, I'm not at all surprised, for example, that trips to and from the senior center and medical appointments are the most common things that we're doing. Um, we have a woman who she does dialysis treatments and this is how she gets to her appointment because there was no other way for her and her walker to get to where she needed to be. Um, later this month, we're also gonna be piloting, and I say piloting because we didn't open this up to the public. We kind of chose people who we know are having a really tough time right now. And we're gonna go up to Hampton Beach and take a two day trips um, with people just so we can see, you know, how does the van handle on the highway? Cause we don't know, we've never driven it that far, um, you know, and kind of look at what are our protocols, you know, what kind of staff support do we need? Um, so we're doing two little pilot trips coming up. And then after that, we'll do regular, um, you know, free trips to say like the Hitchcock Center, things around the Valley. Um, the Friends of the Amherst Senior Center are really wonderful in doing like the bus tours and the, the flights, but this is an option for people for whom cost is a factor. And um, we wanna make sure they have an ability to go into the community. You have a question, Anne? Yeah, how, how do these individuals, not the ones that are using it, but other individuals, how do they access or let you know that they have a need? What's so we, we had it in the newsletter. We are distributing some flyers. It was in the Gazette. It was in the reminder. Um, you know, we'll probably, we put out a press release. I'll likely put out another press release. You know, I know you know this, you have to hit people a lot of times with the same message before they really take ownership of the fact. And then certainly, um, you know, I took a call at the senior center the other day, someone wanted a um, appointment with our computer tutor. And she said, well, I have a walker, so I can't, even though she lived right behind the senior center, she couldn't walk. And I said, if you make your appointment on a Monday, a Wednesday or a Friday, we'll pick you up and we'll bring you to the senior center. So if there's ever a chance where we can shoehorn that in when we're on the phone with someone, we certainly do and word of mouth will, will help that. So it's it's been slow to grow, but that's kind of what we've been doing all along. You know, even something like the cafe where we average a pretty high attendance now, it started with only like five people coming for the first two months. So um, people can call the senior center if, mm -hmm. they have, if they've read about it, but forgotten how to. Yes, they can act. call. Um, oh. We have a special number that's just for our transit program. So we will, transfer that person if the receptionist is there she'll book them the ride and if she's not you know we'll take a message and follow up with that person and we have done a couple same day rides which other places aren't always able to do um and then that yeah and then i mean that's that's pretty much it i think once we start the next fiscal year i might fine tune these statistics even a little bit more um, 
you know, because when we say exercise, well, what kind of exercise programs are we doing? A lot of people think it's just, oh, I'm doing chair yoga, but we have a belly dancing class, which is gaining a lot of steam. We have a more um, more aerobic, intense class uh, on Wednesdays that is something, you know, if you don't want to, if you're ready and able to take it, your exercise to the next step, it's a good fit for you. Um, you know, and the social events, whether that's a cafe or if it's community safety day, um, you know, it, I want to be able to differentiate between all of that, but and if people have you know other things that you're curious about, you know what do we do in a given month? Um, just let me know, and I can pull numbers for you. If there's things you want to see added. Does anyone have any other questions on that? Yeah, what is the social? Uh, what is it called? Uh, social events. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. So those are social events. So that's something like the cafe or, you know, today we did a, a music program where we had some musicians who brought in like a range of instruments and people got to like fiddle with them. And, you know, even if you had no musical ability, they made it so that you could participate in a song. And, um, you know, it was really fun. So anything we do that's not, um, you know, that you might just consider for socialization, that's what we include in social events. So whether it's an ice cream social, whether it's a music class, a painting class, those are all those types of things. Do you need to break those out uh, for any of your reporting uh, requirements? Uh, not for the reporting requirements, okay. but I did just say um, that I want to be a little bit more specific in the next fiscal year. So we'll be kind of measuring those in more fine-tuned detail. I wonder if it would be nice to um going forward, break out the um, memory cafe. Yeah, like that's something I really wanna do because we are getting a really high attendance. And again, that is, you know, when we talk about what do our seniors want, you know, what are people gravitating towards? Um, we have several individuals who are seniors and homeless. We have people of different ethnic backgrounds. We have people for whom English is not their first language. We have people with memory issues, people with um, developmental disabilities. You know, we really span the gamut on people. And the one thing they come for is coffee and conversation. And it gives them the ability to talk and be social. And I think sometimes we take for granted being social. Um, but I just saw another statistic where if you're socially active, it reduces your risk of developing um, dementia by like 40 or 50%. So if you're an older adult and you're socially isolated, you are at an extremely high risk of developing dementia-like symptoms than if you are socially active and engaged in some kind of activity. And Anne, you had another question. Yes, you, at one time you were thinking of having chess tables or something like that, mm -hmm. um, where uh, I, I think you had a very good idea in having some things available where people would socialize while they're doing something else that they enjoy, and it isn't necessarily within the confines mm -hmm. of a registered class thing it's a drop in any time you have time so is that going any further have you so have you that was that? my idea um we are renovating the patio space out by room 101 so they're gonna re redo the the ground and put in an awning i had wanted chess tables for that but it's not in the town's grant request so i would have to work with the friends group to raise money to do that and try to fit it into whatever the town has planned. Um, you know, that grant was put forward from the planning department and, you know, I'm really glad that they did it, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't, you know, I didn't see all the details. I just told them, you know, yeah, we really need an outdoor space by the bank center because people ask me all the time for it. Um, so it, it's, I guess to be quick in my answer, it's cost, it's cost and can we raise the money to do that and, and make it a priority. And how about programs like, um, I know you I, I, you showed me around the space at some point, but um, programs like where people could bring their knitting or their quilting or their something, you know, something that they're doing with their hands mm -hmm. where they can socialize at the same time. 
I'm thinking of something that isn't necessarily a class, but mm -hmm. a like a drop an hour. Yeah, I think I I'm totally can drop in and meet friends and do whatever it is you like to do. I am totally open to that. We just don't have anyone to lead it. And I don't want it to be, you know, we want to have at least in the very beginning, somebody who can be in the room and, um, and then I don't, I can ask my staff, I don't know if they know how to knit. Um, but yeah, those are things that I want to do, but it, yeah. it requires having a little extra hands. But I can tell you, starting in May, we did feature a local artist. And in July, we're going to be featuring some beautiful quilt work by another local artist in the um, lounge area. So it is a nice, and we do a reception every time there's a new artist. So we have been kind of featuring people in the community who are very crafty and um, we're taking more names for um, other months because the idea is to have it much like in Northampton and Hadley where one month we feature a different artist. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, and that's all I have for stats. Um, I can give a very brief update. I think next month, once we reconvene as a full board, we'll want to do um, look at that agent dementia friendly action plan and identify what are our priorities. Um, one of the things that I love about that plan is that we're already doing several things, you know, like the memory cafe, for example. So it's not like we have to start from the ground up. We can definitely um, roll and build on some of the things that the senior center is already doing. Um, and then upcoming events. So we will be doing two big things. Uh, well, three big things. One just happened. We had our very first rainbow coffee hour la uh, this past Tuesday. Yeah, it was really well attended. I think we had about 15 people. Um, we had um, Pam Young from the DEI office. We had Liz from Amherst Neighbors and um, a really a really great group. And um, it was a lot of fun to see that come to fruition because Mark Barrett and I have been working on that for, he's been doing a lot of the legwork, but for a long time um, and getting that ready and having that be a, a real program. On Thursday, June 22nd, we will be showing the Gen Silent movie. Um, doors open at 5.30 at the Bang Center. We're gonna show the movie at six and it's, a it's a tearjerker. I'll be really honest. It is an incredibly powerful look at the lives of four LGBT seniors in the Boston area and the different challenges that they have to face. Um, you know, one of the things that struck out to me is, you know, you have a couple where, um, you know, he's caring for his partner who has Parkinson's and it's getting worse. And how do you live how do you acknowledge not only that that person was your partner at a time when that was not okay, but then how do you try to have your own life on top of that? Because, you know, if this person's in skilled nursing facility and you're not, you know, you are entitled to have your own life, but that's a really difficult thing to try to manage. Um, the film also features a woman who is trans and she has emphysema. And because she came out, her whole family deserted her children everything and how do you navigate you know all the treatments the, the the difficulties of daily life when you're totally isolated and you know and you have to make connections pretty much from scratch so it is it's a really powerful film um it's a film that is Helen had done pre-pandemic at one point and it's very important to Al um and and Mark is also working on it so I, I would definitely encourage anyone to come Bring tissues, um, but it'll be it'll be a, a really nice watch. And then after the movie, we're going to have a just a discussion to kind of debrief. And if people want to share their thoughts and their feelings, um, there'll be an opportunity to do so. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, we'll have Community Safety Day on Saturday, June twenty fourth, and that's at the Mill River Recreation Area. Um, we we launched it last year, and it's a little bit bigger. And I'm glad that it keeps growing. And it, the, the purpose of the event is older adults represent a third of 911 calls in Amherst. And I want to make sure that those older adults know who's coming to their house in an emergency. So not only do you get to know your local first responders, but you get a whole plethora of information on how to stay safe. And then you get some fun activities too. You can see how the, um, the police department uses canine dogs. You can see how the fire department uses the jaws of life. 
if you have grandkids, you can bring them and there will be a DJ and face painting. We'll have La Mesa food truck. Um, there'll be information tables from the Northwestern District Attorney's Office and the Sheriff's Department. You know, if any of you don't know, um, the Sheriff's Department offers the triad program and one of the one of their huge things that they've been doing right now is um, durable medical equipment loans. So when people are having surgery and they need a walker or they need shower seats or the hospital beds, they can help at no cost. People in the community get those services. Um, so, you know, I, I love these types of events because not only is it good for our older adults, but it's good for everybody in the community. And you can, like I said, bring your family, bring your grandkids and just have a really great time. Um, there will also do some car seat inspections um, and things like that. And that's all June. And in July, just to put on can people's, we, can, oh yeah. Sorry, can we just hold up on community safety day for a sec? Mm -hmm. So I just wanna say I did it last year and it was a lot of fun. And this year, as Haley said, she's been working hard, it's gonna be even bigger. And a couple of things that I just wanna highlight that we're gonna be doing is this is where we're going to um, display a to-go bag um, that we've been talking about that we can help with visuals, make this real for folks in terms of what you should have. So that will be one of our, um, one of the things. Another thing that we're going to have on display is photos, thanks to our expert <laughs> photographer. Um, we do all kinds of cool programs throughout the year, and we've got this great guy who shoots pictures, but most of us haven't seen these awesome photos. So not to put Dennis on the spot, but we're no. going to try to <laughs> spotlight, because um, I think it's going to help us as a COA it help educate people in the community about the variety of things we do and the different things that we're involved with. So. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here, Dennis, and say going forward, anytime the COA is at any of these events, we're going to have your photo display. And I, I envision that it's going to evolve over the years. We're going to have print version. We're going to have a <laughs> digital slideshow. You know, who knows where <laughs> we're going with this, but um, okay, I, you let I me think know. it's really, it's going to be really helpful for us. So I want to encourage all of you to um, volunteer at Community Safety Day. Um, it's at Mill River. You can come for a little, you can come for a lot, whatever. But I, I think it's really important that we have a, a presence there. And I also want to thank Anne, you donated, you're, you're working on putting that to-go bag together for us. I, and I wasn't certain if you would be able to make it or not, Anne. And if you can't, I will volunteer to pick it up from you, we can. No, I, I have it, my, my hand is up because I need to know what part of the Mill River Recreation Area to go to and what time I need to be there. Uh, it starts at 10 and we are gonna take over the whole area. You won't be able to miss us because there's gonna be a huge line of emergency response vehicles down the side and pop-up tents and they bring a safety yeah, trailer. I I'm really asking where you want that go bag because I'm really not capable of walking around the whole thing carrying it. I'd like to go to one place. Oh, sure. You do you, go um, it'll be there. Do you want to drop it off at the senior center on Friday? Because I load a van and bring everything over in the morning. I think it would be easier if I bring it and open it so that I've I'm I've arranged it so people can really see. Okay. The various things in it. Otherwise, it's just a backpack on wheels, you know, which is useless. Where, anyway. where, where, where? Tony. Thank you. Okay. So then um, I would say plan to come around 9 a.m. And we set up on the opposite side of the basketball courts. So you want to go to that parking area and then I'll I'll see you when you pull up and I'll show you where the the tents are and you can set it up on our tables. Opposite the basketball court. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's great. I'm very excited that we're going to ha finally have our to go bag on display. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Haley. I, That's okay. I really interrupted you there. That's all right. Um, the last thing I was going to flag for people is that 
throughout the months of July and August, we're going to be doing ice cream socials at the Bang Center. They start from one and go till two. And um, we love to have celebrity guests. So if anyone from the COA wants to stop by, you're more than welcome to do so. It's a really great way to get to know people in like a really casual atmosphere. Um, I already know that the that Crest APD, the fire department, they're all going to be there. And I plan to reach out to some town counselors and um, and Pam and Jen in the DEI office. So it'll be a great way to kind of connect with older adults in a low key setting. Um, they were, you know, depending on the speaker, the fire department do a crowd of like 15 people. So, you know, some individuals have some serious sway and um, it'd just be fun to see people there. So you're all welcome Fridays uh, throughout G July and August, one to two at the Bang Center. And do people have any other questions on upcoming events? Do you already have dates for when others are coming in for that, Haley? I tried to get dates and then they told me we'll come to a lot of them. <laughs> Okay. And so I said, well, what's a lot? Are you coming every week or not? So I'm still trying to pinpoint that. Okay. Um, but I kind of like that. I was going to say, if we, if there was a date when a bunch of us were available, if we could, because my thought is if we come in for the ice cream social, maybe we can get that to go bag on display. We can get our photo, <laughs> yes. photo display up there so we can, um, get more excitement and interest in if you got if, if everyone here can collectively agree um tell me the date and i'll tell people not to come on that particular day let's do it that way do folks know what their summer schedules are like? work every friday Okay, all right, so that won't work for you then, Chad. No. Nope. Others that might be available? I work every Friday too. However, okay. I do wanna uh, request some hours off to attend the safe day. When is oh, that? Fun. Uh, that is Saturday, June 24th. It's the last Saturday in June. Oh, oh that's a day off, okay. Nice. You put it on my calendar. Yeah, you can actually sit on the police motorcycles or in the fire truck and we can take your picture. So <laughs> if you've never been in the back of a cruiser, this could be your opportunity. Or, you know, if you want to sit in the fire truck. Get your picture taken. That's right. <laughs> it's all about the pictures. <laughs> yeah. Then we got to get the COA Instagram page so that everyone can tag us in their photos on the touch a truck event. <coughs> yeah. So I'm, you know, thinking long term here. <laughs> Norma? Yeah. Well, I was going to say when July 4th is what day of the week? Uh, July 4th is a Tuesday. So oh, the senior okay. center will be closed, but the Town will be doing the fireworks display on the first of July, so the Saturday. Yeah. Because I'm thinking maybe a lot of people will be gone, and if that's when you wanted people to come, you know. Um, yeah, it's tough to say. It's I know it's the last. It's the Saturday after the end of the school year, so I'm hoping that people will let their kid finish the school year and be yeah. around on Saturday. Um, but we had over 300 people last year, and now we've also involved um, UMass PD. They're going to be handing out ice cream and bringing a horse. Um, so I think that'll pull a lot of people because people love animals. So it's an event for the whole community. It's not just for seniors. It's mm -hmm. groups of children, families. Yes. Okay. All yeah, right, thank community you. safety day. And one of the important things mm -hmm. to me was to have an event that, you know, sometimes we talk about what are older adults mean and it's like, it doesn't, what older adults need or what we all need, which is community, which is to know how to stay safe, which is to know who are my first responders? How do mm -hmm. I, what do I do if I've been scammed? Um, so it's, it's kind of trying to, at least in my mind, take a bit more of a modern approach and say, hey, like, we don't have to think of older adults needs as like an other. It's 
encompasses the whole community because they're part of the community and everyone is aging every day. Um, so that's why I, for some events, not every event, but for some events, I like to structure it where it could just be open to anybody. Because um, I think that helps reduce some of the stigma. You know, the people who tell me they're 78 and too young for the senior center, I want to say, no, like, come anyway, like, you're going to love it. Um, just give us a chance. That's my vision of our uh, senior center when we get it built is that it's, um, it's intergenerational. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. No okay. Yeah. Do you, um, has anyone done anything about talking to like that class that you, you took Haley with, um, the students, I don't know if it was a psychology class that they came to the senior center and, uh, finished. the mindfulness class that we did. I don't remember. Is that the one there you mean? Quite a few students that was, then they came over to the senior center. It was, a, I thought it was a psych class. Oh, do you mean the Amherst College class? Yes. Yeah. yeah, so in the fall, Amherst College will be offering a class on aging and ageism. I spoke at the class and then I invited the class to come to the senior center to talk to real seniors. Um, and yeah, I had a I had a really great time. I think the instructor really loved it. So I plan to reach out to her maybe sometime in August. So I can like put it on her radar that, hey, you know, we, we would love to do a special event and maybe even make it a bit more formalized than it than it was last year because it was kind of put together at the last minute. Good. Yeah. Well, I went to one that they did a few years ago. Uh, I don't even remember what it was called. They just wanted to match up a senior with a high school mm -hmm. student. And uh, she wanted, she was from um, Asia and she wanted you know, to know about how we were brought up and what, mm -hmm. you know, what happened during your childhood and all this. Yeah. And there's a book with, at the Senior Center. I don't know if anyone's seen it. But yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I love intergenerational. Mm -hmm. One of the, one thing that I remember about working with older adults in my first Senior Center director job was I was talking to a woman and she said, you know, oh, I, I grew up in the 50s. And I had a job and she was married and she took the money from her earnings and she wanted to buy a television and she went to the store and the salesperson told her, no, not without your husband. You need your husband here in order for me to, tell, to sell you this TV. And I thought, you know, that not that long ago that you needed your husband to go with you to buy a TV that you could afford to purchase on the spot. Um, so if we, if we don't share those stories, kids don't know that. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's easy to take for granted the things we have now because we don't appreciate the struggles that people had to go through to get us to this point. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely like intergenerational. It's the best way to go. Now, if you don't go with your credit card, you leave <laughs> your credit card at home. <laughs> you right. can't get that TV. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, now they cost a lot. Um, so yeah, I can move on. So I wanted to just, um, I don't want to end my report on a, on a somber note, but I, I wanted to talk a little bit about last meeting. Uh, I had a few people come up to me privately, um, after that meeting was put on TV and just said that, you know, wow, that, that must've been really difficult. Um, for you, because I think I don't know that everyone really understood um, how challenging that meeting was for me. Um, you know, talking about those experiences at the bank center and people who are combative and people who are threatening. Um, you know, I think it's easy to say, well, you know, you should have done this, you should have done that, unless you're there and you're you're working it in the moment. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want to be crass, but I have had people tell me like, you're, you're a bitch, you're a whore, people in the parking lot harassing me, whether it's whistling or they think they're clever and they ask me inappropriate questions about my hair color. Um, you know, my staff and I, people who come to the senior center deserve to feel safe. And one of the ways that we feel safe is when we call the Amherst Police Department to come um, 
you know, I love using Crest, don't get me wrong, but in a situation like happened that Wednesday, you know, if we made three phone calls to the Amherst Police Department, they can do a criminal trespass on someone and they can prevent that person from coming back to the senior center. Um, you know, the reality is that we are a public building and we have individuals from all walks of life. And sometimes that's great, but sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's really hard on people. Um, we have a class that meets Tuesdays and Thursdays and they've stopped leaving the door open in the room that they practice in because they've heard people screaming and shouting profanities and they don't feel safe if they don't have the door closed and things like that break my heart. Um, you know, and it was just, I was really emotional because of how fresh that was for me. But I think, you know, like I said, it's, it's easy to say, oh, I should have done this or I should have done that. But unless you're there and someone is screaming those things in your face, if you feel unsafe, I always tell my staff, call Amherst Police Department, get somebody in there who can handle the scene and do what needs to be done because you don't know anymore if someone is gonna fly off the handle. You don't know what they have on their person. Um, it's really tough. It's really, really tough. And, you know, and it was hard for me at the same time to then hear, you know, folks say, well, you do a really good job, but we need to be doing X, Y, and Z. Um, I think that hopefully, Jean and Dennis, you can attest, you know, when we had the COA training, COAs are advisory to the senior center director to support what I'm doing. And yeah. when we talk about programming, it's not to say, oh, well, you know, we should have, you know, this group or that group. It's to say, hey, we notice that we're not serving this population. Or for example, we have a program and homeless seniors are coming to that program. What other services can we branch off of for that? You know, it, it, we can go on our own course, but meeting the seniors at the center is the best way to know what their needs are. I would never have known some of the things that people are going through in this community with hoarding, um, you know, people whose families are abusing their parent and they're trying to be the caregiver, but they can't always handle it. You know, older adults who have developmental disabilities and, you know, and I hear them talk and I'm like, oh my gosh, like you shouldn't be telling people you carry $300 in cash on you. You should not say that. <laughs> Please don't do that. Um, if you don't meet the people at the center, how do, how do we know how to support them? We need to bring them here so that we have that touch point, that one focus point, because the senior center should be the community center in the sense that it's the place people can come and be amongst each other in a safe environment, in a safe environment that is welcoming and understands the unique needs of older adults. And everything that this council does should have that message in place and should be focused on how do we connect with people? How do we bring them in? Like I said, people are socially isolated post pandemic. That is gonna not only deteriorate their physical health because they're not gonna be walking. So their mobility is gonna get worse. So they're gonna keep falling and falls can kill people. It's gonna impact their mental health. It's gonna increase rates of suicide. It's gonna increase rates of de depression. It's gonna increase rates of dementia. We need people active and we need them active at the center. And you know we can do satellite programs that are not at the senior center, but the good place to start is the center. And I think that that really should be the focus. And I, I wanna have meetings where we are coming together and being proactive so that it's not just saying, oh, well, you know, we should be doing X, Y, and Z, and then we talk about it, and then maybe we forget that we talked about it, and so six months from now, we talk about it again. Like, the calendar is good. I like where we're going now. I think we should definitely be more strategic and think about how do we best serve the people in the community who are fragmented and need the support of the senior center. You know, I'll end just by saying one of the best programs we did in Bernardston was called Mrs. Claus for a cause. And we did it every December and we make care packages for people who either lost a loved one recently or their spouse died around the holidays or their kids moved away so they were alone and we brought them gift bags. They weren't expensive, a couple of puzzle books, some candy, lotions, things like that, but it made people feel good to be remembered around the holiday, to feel connected to their community. You know, 
that sounds simple, but that has a lot of impact and we can do that. We can do that this December. It's not hard. I'll, I can go through how we did it before. You know, those are the kinds of things that I would like to see us do. You know, as, as we onboard our new members next month, I would like to see us think about real tangible things we can do to get people at the center. Because that's what's important to me is seeing people and having connections. Well said, congratulations and thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it, it, when, it, at the moment that anybody actually perceives a threat in a public building, that I think the appropriate action should be taken right away. Mm -hmm. uh, if somebody's standing around a little disturbed for whatever reason, screaming obscenities and that sort of thing, that, that person absolutely needs to leave the building immediately. Mm -hmm. And there shouldn't be any question about that. And uh, I, because of the potential of violence mm -hmm. that uh, uh, you probably need to go immediately to the PD, to the police, uh, to re because anything else just sort of if, like I said, if you if you perceive uh, if you perceive a a, th a threat of violence, then that needs to be responded to right away. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. my take on it. It's Thank a big you. responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, we can't fool around with that. I mean, especially yeah. when you've got elderly people who are getting yelled at in, with, with obscenities. No, not not at all. No. We want this to be a happy place for people, not a place where they have to feel like they have to close the doors because if they don't, they're going to hear something they don't want to hear or somebody's going to run into their room and, you know, be untowards. Oh, no, 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 no. There are, there are laws in place here in the Commonwealth, uh, specifically pointing out uh, acts of violence against, uh, against senior citizens. Yes, yes, yes and, there are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so that should be a, a really significant clue as to what actions should be taken. Mm -hmm. Yep. Was this incident um, publicized? Is it in the newspaper? No, it would, it could be in the Amherst Bulletin when they do like the police calls, but it didn't get a write up or anything like that. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm rather glad that it didn't. I think you took the right action and I'm glad that it didn't because I wouldn't want to frighten people not, you know, to not come to the center because they think they might be endangered. It is an isolated incident. It doesn't, yeah. thank God, happen really often. And you have a big responsibility for protection. We're living in a world where, you know, children yeah. get killed in elementary schools and so this fortunately was somebody who was being disruptive and frightening but you can't tell mm -hmm. you know that we, we're just living in a world where people behave irrationally so yeah. i think haley's responsibility is enormous there thanks And although I wasn't at the meeting, I would just like to say when we have, and hopefully we don't have any other incidents like that, but if somebody is sharing something that was, I'm gonna say traumatic, um, I think our, our initial response should be one of support. Um, and I think there's, there's always time after the fact that you can sort of debrief on it to, you know, give thought to whether there are other things that would have, you know, we could have done or, or things for the future to bear in mind. But I think at the time, um, it's to listen and, and be supportive, because I, I can only imagine how, how difficult and challenging and kind of emotionally draining that was for you, Haley. So, um, yeah, I, we're grateful that you do what you do. That's thank right. you. Well, you take care of us. So thank you. Thank you for being here. Of course. Uh, it's what I'm here for.
I think next on our agenda is the minutes from the May meeting. And does anybody have any changes, edits, additions, subtractions? And if not, anybody want to make a somebody want to make a motion to approve? So moved. Second it. Second. There we go. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'm not voting because I wasn't there. So that's probably for the best. What do <laughs> I know? <laughs> All right. I don't. I don't know if it's my eyes, but I don't see Chad. No. Yeah, he's he's top left corner on me. Okay. Are you there? You can see him? Yeah, I just voted. Yeah, yeah, he's oh, there. He did. Okay, just... awesome. I can't see you. You're you're blank on my screen. So okay. All right. Just wanted to make sure we didn't miss you. Oh. Okay. All right. Um, next is topics not reasonably anticipated by the chair. 48 hours in advance of the meeting. I do not have any of those. The only thing I can think of would be our friend's fundraiser with, with Mr. Dick Yorga is here. He could talk about how everyone should come buy scarves, purses, and jewelry at the farmer's market this Saturday. Hi, Dick. I advertised it over at the... Uh... Amherst neighbors. Awesome. Oh, good. Hoping Thank for you. a good turnout. Dick, are you still there? Do you want to say a few words on the fundraiser? Dick, uh, can you hear us? We can't hear you. His screen just changed from what it was the whole meeting. Yeah, I don't know what this yeah. is. Yeah. Oh. What is that? And somebody's a big gray circle. That's, yeah, that's, that's it. Oh, okay. in outer space. Dick, we cannot hear you. No, it's maybe right you me. should. Oh, an well. email, right, Haley? I'm sorry? An email. Send him an email, somebody. I can do that. I'll text him. Or Dennis, text. you could start, though, because you're you're on the friends, you know. Um, no, I, I, I don't know what he's what he's got planned for a report. So I don't I don't plan to. Uh, OK. You know, thank you very much for offering, though. Um, it's it's independent. They we they're not going to ask anything from us anyway. I assume. No, no, but just to give an update. Well, I guess the only really update is bring bring your cash for the <laughs> farmers market on Saturday. We want to raise money for um, our scholarship program, our wellness scholarships. We've seen a real uptake in people needing help for foot care appointments, and we also want to raise some money for the Memory Cafe. Awesome. And what are the hours again? Uh, 10 to uh, 2? I think, I think it's actually 9 to 1. Oh, okay. Okay. I should know that. Yeah. I've been talking about it for like well, over a yeah. month. Well, I have to I have to pick up the, the van at no, certainly no later. I'll, I'll yeah. be there like about 8.15 or so. Yeah, that's but, time for the 10. And, and then I assume that I, I can probably pull the van over into, uh, let's say, Bullwood. And uh, offload from there, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah, I can. Um, yeah, I think that sounds like a good plan. Then we can unload and set up. Okay. See if I can call. Hi, Dick. Yeah, I can't hear you. Wait a minute. Can you just more people with cardiovascular disease risk um, can have exacerbation or event from um, these types of exposures. Oh, um, 
Go to go to the bottom of the screen. And Go to the left left uh, left bottom corner of your screen. Um, other people You've got a little uh, microphone logo over there. Just you have it there. Ghost makes the poison. Hmm. You just so, tell them to leave and come back. I tell you what, Dick. Uh, um, it, the suggestion has been made for you to leave, sign out, and then come back. <laughs> reboot. Yeah, re <laughs> reboot. Is that his television that so, we hear? Yeah. yeah. No, what we're. No. What no. But uh, your television is Norma. Yeah. Oh, anyway. Sorry, yeah. it is no. It's... Sorry. Hello. So yes. I, I wonder it to be efficient with time if we can have Norma do her report while Dick is trying to reboot. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, okay, this is the last um, report that I will give until uh, the fall because we won't have him in any more meetings. We had a meeting for the Nutrition Council on the 10th of May. And um, it's the usual routine and I don't wanna bore you with it. So tell me if I need to speed up. Um, the, what are the best things that people liked? And Hadley liked their pork chop with pears. Other people said the pork chops were tough. So, you know, again, it's always hard to um, get an accurate count. Um, but Amherst like chicken pot pie, baked ziti, um, and corned beef was, um, was tasty and appealing. Um, and lemon um, and dill on the salmon was highly rated. Broccoli and cheese is good. Shepherd's pie had corn added this time and people were pleased with that. Um, but the least liked were taco salad or pollock was too dry. Um, pork chop tough. So I guess that was not just a couple people said that. Um, and they wanted to know when they were gonna get back to international dinners they'd been switching from community dining sites. Well, now all of the um, community dining sites are open and in use. Um, and Westfield has been for a long time and um, well, Amherst with the, with the go grab and go meals. Um, there were some comments. They said that the, uh, the boxes or whatever they kept the uh, milk in uh, smelled like it needed to be rinsed out that it had smell of sour milk. So that's not good, but that'll be corrected. More salads. Um, and they know that that will happen at least once a week during the summer, if not more. Um, there's another comment about sodium <laughs> content and um, a time when people signed up for one meal and they got quiche instead. And that's usually up to the dining um, you know, person in charge uh, to tell them ahead of time, but I don't know how, why this happened if they ran out or something happened to the way they cooked it. So um, And they all have iPads if they order their meals and stuff. So, so that's good and that's going well. But they did have four uh, snow days, more so in the hill towns that they did actually get snow. I mean, when UMass is canceled, you think, gee, you know, that was never canceled in the past for anything, but we didn't have the ice that I guess they expected. So better safe than sorry. Um, this is items from the chef and survey responses. Um, there was a talk about the ginger carrots. 
Um, some say more ginger, some say none, and some say um, cook the, cooking it more would help. Um, also, they usually try to blanch them and then steam them. Um, mm. So hopefully that will, will make a difference. Um, more chicken. Um, menu updates. Uh, there's going to be a salad, I says, as I said, at least once a week during the summer. Uh, chicken curry is now on the menu. Uh, lemon bars are a hit, and they will try um, to get local vegetables as soon as they're available. Um, and the farmer that they usually got asparagus from. Um, crop failed this year. So I don't know if they got it from someone else or mm. if they just didn't have it, have it as often. Um, kitchen updates, trying to reduce the food waste is really difficult because many times you can't refreeze stuff. And um, <clears throat> so that that's sometimes a problem, but uh, 10 to 15% um, choose the choice meal uh, air on a cold cold day. Uh, prefer meat over fish, and then those that prefer fish over vegetarian. So I guess the vegetarian people win. They don't get you know, what they want. Um, then some wondered why people get a package of meals so that it also takes care of dinner. And um, I didn't realize that they they did did this, um, I guess, as frequently as they do. And they have to order it two months ahead of time. And so this is clearly someone who isn't able to cook themselves and doesn't have someone there to help them. Um, okay. Total meals have increased by 5%, but they they have on average 710 meals a day that they put out. Any questions? Oh, they did want to want to know if you wanted to change the format of, um, you know, it's kind of boring to go through well likes dislikes. It's also relative to, per, you know, mm -hmm. each person. But uh, the commodities have been really down. Um, in June and uh, Kelly, the nutritionist said that the fiscal year starts July 1st um, and that they will be having some chicken and turkey roasts, ground beef, canned fruits and vegetables. Um, and these are just as good. I mean, if you get a canned fruit that's cold and it's in the um, you know refrigerator and it's packed in its own juice, that's just as healthy as eating it fresh, but of course we prefer it fresh if we can get it. Um, and then the program updates. Um, they want more vegetarian options um, and choice meals, less sweets, butternut squash is running out and they'll look for you know, zucchini or summer squash to uh, take its place. Um, salads, as I said, once a week. Um, they do plan a strawberry shortcake dessert at the end of June. Um, and their kitchen is fully staffed. And, and they wondered if people would change the content of their surveys, because they are time consuming. They, they do all these statistics and I mean, I'm not big on numbers, so I don't want to bore you with reading, you know, that, but um, they just want to know that they're doing it okay, and if not, to let them know. Um, any questions? They are even trying to hire another uh, dietitian or nutritionist, because Kelly likes to go out to the to the uh, home, you know, the community meals and do a little presentation. And that's pertinent, but, you know, like keeping hydrated, not just in the summer, but 
um, you know, if you're sick or you don't feel so, um, it's tried to be tied into to help help them. So, and she's available for questions. You know, you can just call call her number. So, okay. And they voted not to have a meeting in July. So, um, I'll see you in September. <laughs> Thank you, Norma. Norma. That that to be a song. Song. Yeah, that's right. Don't <laughs> ask me to sing it. <laughs> oh, Norma, I did want to say this. How else would they know um, with the population they're serving what they like and don't like? I think yeah. that those questions are fairly relevant. Yeah. Um, you really do want to provide you know, you don't want to throw, I know people that, that get that dinner and if they don't like something, they're gonna throw it out. Yeah. So the more you know about what people like, the less wasteful you're gonna be and the less money you're going yeah. to be spending on things that they're not gonna eat. That's a good point. I'll, I'll bring that up next time just to say, you know, just kind of rephrase what you've said. So appreciate that. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Norma. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> has, I don't know if it's my screen, has Dick come back? I don't believe so, no. No, he's okay. gone completely. Anybody heard from him? Are we? I texted him, yeah. he said he could talk, but he none of us could hear him and. Yeah, what about? Okay, is there anything else to be said about the pop-up closet? Pop up class oh, is going oh, to be yeah. the on, on the thirteenth and the tenth. Come on and tenth. Yeah, the tenth, Dennis. <laughs> Sorry, what am I doing? Thirteenth, anyway. <laughs> That's a salt council meeting. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the canceled friends meeting. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, Saturday, <laughs> at any rate, from uh, let's say nine-ish to uh, yeah. on one. One. Yeah, one. <laughs> come, come with lots and lots of dollars. It's all for a good cause. Yeah. Um, so it's spend... a cash only operation. Yes, for it's now. You know they do charge the fees. Um, yeah. but I can. But you I can take say, a check either. I'll take a check, but I prefer cash. Cash is king. Yeah. Um, yeah. But you know, and the reality is, our spending is doubled and our revenue is halved. So every little bit that we can get, we will be very happy to, to do so. And um, like I said, it all goes to doing the programs and activities because we don't get any budget for that. That's all grants and donations. Yep. So. Okay, so everybody yeah. start Saturday morning shopping. Yeah. <laughs> Saturday morning. I'm going to be bringing the most amazing collection of vintage ladies' hankies. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna I, blow your mind. Uh, there'll be a run on those, Dennis. <laughs> are, are you still taking donations? Oh, uh, we could. We we stopped and we did load yeah. the van up. But if it's really really nice, I will happily take it if it can be brought over tomorrow. Okay. See if I can. I, can we you park in the? Um, no, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> Did um, can we park in the parking lot on Saturday if it's a function going on for the for the bank center? For the bank center, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we're going to be at the farmers market, so we'll be on the common. But yeah, yeah. you could park. Well, it's hard to park sometimes with with the market going on because you know. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is tough. Um, you're. If you have a senior parking permit, those are only good Monday through Friday, though. Oh, so okay. if you were intending to use that, I'm sorry, but you have to pay or hope yeah, they don't bust you. you. Whichever you want. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and I will be there probably around nine. Excellent. I got some scarves okay. with your name on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah. I made a few things too. Oh, nice. Okay, our next meeting is Thursday, July 13th. So circle that on your calendar. So the Amherst boards are now meeting in person. Um, I'm sorry? Some of the Amherst boards are now meeting in person. 
Um, are we special or the same or what's the story? Yeah, I think um, Gina and I can definitely talk with the town manager and, and report back at our next meeting. So it's going to be the 13th? The 13th. Of July. Lucky 13. So hopefully it's a successful pop-up. And uh, if you're not doing anything on Saturday, July 1st, there's going to be fireworks and activities at the stadium, and um, your help is needed and wanted. Should you Very need. much wanted. So desire, and <laughs> otherwise, hopefully you have a sparkling fourth. Oh, you have Terry. a question, Terry? Yeah, I was just going to say that I'll do the minutes until the new group comes and see what happens yeah. with that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. You. Okay. Anybody have anything else? Are we ever going to have a blood pressure clinic again? We had offered those for like six months and no one showed up, oh. but we are collaborating with a public health nurse uh, from the health department and she can do them. We yeah. have um, a standing clinic with her that I don't unfortunately remember the time of right now, but if you call the senior center on Monday, we can tell you. I would say I'll call tomorrow, but um, we have the town of Amherst employee picnic at noon. So we're going to be shutting down early. Mm -hmm. I'll be there on Monday. Okay. I'll relieve Jean. Yes, that's right. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right. yeah. Okay. Um, if nobody has any motion to adjourn. Thank you, Dennis. You're welcome. Second. <laughs> a second. Second. Awesome. All in favor. Oh, yeah. Again, <laughs> fond farewell to Karen and Anne. Yes, thank you. Thank you, so thank you for everything. Thank you Hopefully you. we'll Thanks see so you in the course of our travels around town. But we'll miss you. Yes, yes. for sure. Hopefully we'll see you shopping Saturday morning. <laughs> All right. Take bye -bye. care. Thank you. Bye -bye. Anne, Anne is on mute. You're on mute. <laughs> I will see you at the Mill River. Oh, yes. I will see you then. I remember that. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.